Strangely, nothing is more valuable than knowing what you don't know. Hi, my name is Alex. I've argued enough for a lifetime. In this series of videos, I zoom in on the perspective science can give you. Find the playlist at the end of this one. Because nature's complex, science isn't. Do you have a, I don't know, say a preferred barber, a person you'll always visit to get your hair cut or done, depending on which verb suits your needs better? If you're like me and you use a lawnmower at home, don't worry, just exchange this example of everyday life with your example of everyday life. It'll work just as well. What made you choose that particular barber? Experience, first by others, then by yourself, I suppose. Experience with what, though? The service, the human behind the barber, you know, always smiling, ASMR voice, the price, what was it? A combination of all those things? Okay, I can believe that. At the start of it all lies the good question. I talk a lot about the good question on this channel. It's part of science to spend time on finding the good question. Then, I also connect science to daily life. And that's the thing. In daily life, you can't go all sciency in your way of thinking, right? Remember the cat and the TV. How often does the cat climb behind the TV to fuzz around and are there any patterns as to when she does it? If you haven't seen it, there's a link down there to a video called Beginner's Guide to Science. And that was a clunky question based on trying to figure out why a cat would go behind a TV and rip out the cables. It was the best question with the potentially most useful answers when talking about cats sneaking behind TVs. See, in daily life we can't go around asking actually checkable questions all the time. We have to make assumptions more or less all the time. We can't test, quote unquote, every barber in even a smallish city and first then make a decision. How often do you need to go to a barber before you can eliminate factors like bad days, wrong employee, and so forth from the equation, as it were. And make a scientifically sound decision on where the likelihood for you getting the haircut you want is highest. And that's assuming that you actually know what haircut you really want. I wouldn't, most of the time, hence the lawnmower. So no, running the scientific method in everyday life isn't feasible. Or is it? Let's look at the underlying idea. If you're like me, you listen to a friend make recommendations on which barber to use. Is one friend, one recommendation really good enough? You expect me to say no now, right? My answer is yes, though. A yes with modifications. How much time do you want to spend on preventing that bad haircut? Because that's what we're talking about, isn't it? Chances are that the barber with whom your friend is happy won't destroy your face. So go on, try, why not? Take another example. I play table tennis. I do it often enough and in competitions, so checking the best equipment is something that is worth my time. I try to eliminate what I don't like until I'm happy. Yet, that's not an endless process either. In reality, I never stop after the first test, but I do stay with the first set of rubbers that make my game significantly better. That is, so that I notice it. I'm old enough, by the way, to have found my blade, quote unquote. But that's just for those of you who play as well. And here's the thing. The scientific process is like that too. My former colleagues may crucify me for saying it out loud, but it is exactly like this. You ask, you check possible answers. It's just that taking a deep dive into the subjects can get you extra knots in your brain and you can't stop the process after the first or even the hundredth step. Take those particle accelerators at CERN, for example. Brian Cox worked or may still work on experiments conducted there. Did you know that one experiment involves smashing particles together pretty much billions of times? So yeah, no, you don't stop after one round. But the reason you don't is very simple. You can't. You can't stop if you actually want to draw conclusions you can live with. 
the chance that the metaphorical barber would destroy your face if you did is too big. So barber-like. Hmm. Listen to science angst after this one. We're human, we're intrinsically and generally scientific. Whether your conspiracy uncle likes it or not. But we balance the science in us with pragmatism and stop the process, yes, sometimes even after the first step. Why do I mention all this? Because knowing this has done something surprising to me. It made me just that little more conscious of my decisions. I don't overly claim to be a reasonable person, nor do I call on my gut feelings in my decision making and lift those over hard evidence very often. I just make my decisions the best I can, being content with that. Got a bad haircut? Whatever. It'll grow out again and I'll leave that barber alone next time. We all make mistakes and most of them, if you really look at them, don't matter all that much. Understanding that may make you live better with your decisions. It creates a sort of comfort zone, really. Do you know what I mean?